Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Shabbos Daf Kimo, one Daf Beis, Omid Beis, three lines from the bottom, says Digmar. Omar le Rav Masna la Abayi, Rav Masna asked the following Kasha of Abayi. Hot ham ne havyan? How come the Mishnah only comes up with a total of eight, eight different examples, eight different scenarios of the Melacha of Haitsa'a on Shabbos? Hot ham ne havyan? Is it only eight? The Mishnah begins and tells us, that there are Shtaim Shein Arba, there are a total of four cases of the Malach of Yitzhak regarding the Balabayis standing inside. There are additional four cases regarding the Ani for a total of eight. How come you only come up with eight? Tarti Sri Havin, it's actually much more than eight, it's actually twelve, it's Tarti Sri. How's that? Because the Mishnah it was divided into two sections. The Mishnah began by describing Malacha is Do'i Raisa, when the individual performed the entire Malacha from beginning to end. The Mishnah began with an Ani who did Hachnasa. He lifted an item off the Rishos HaRavim and brought it into Rishos HaYachad where he did the Hanacha. So he uprooted it, he did the Akira as well as deposited it, the Hanacha, which involves a Malacha Do'i Raisa. Second case was the Ani who did Haitzah who did the Akira from Rosh Hashayachan and brought it out to Rosh Hashayachan and did the Hanukkah there. So these are two examples of Malachas Deiraisa. The Mishnah went on to tell us regarding Abel Abayis, who did a similar Malacha. He began with Hitzah, he took the item from the Rosh Hashayachid and did the Hanukkah from Rosh Hashayachan, or in the reverse, he took an item from Rosh Hashayachan and deposited it into Rosh Hashayachid. Those are four examples of Malachas Deiraisa. The Mishnah then proceeded in the Sefer, in the second part of the Mishnah, to tell us that sometimes, even if one performed a half a malacha, for instance, an akira, he merely lifted it off one rishus, but did not complete the malacha, the Mishnah cited four examples, two involving a balabais, two involving the akira of an ani. The Mishnah told us those are not malachas, they are they're merely asr midra banan. So we have a total of four such cases. Two Akiris that the Balabayas did, two cases involving Akiris of the Ani. So this gives us a total of eight cases in all. Four in the Reisha, which involve a Malachad Raisa, and four in the Seifa, four variations of Akiris with Ad Hanachis, two that the Ani did, two, not, two that the Balabayas did, for a total of eight cases of Haitzah in the Mishnah. Cesar Masna, how come we only have eight? Let's remember that in the Seifa, there are two halves to every Malacha. Why do you only list the Akiris, the first half of the Malacha? What about the Hanachis? With every Akira, there was also a Hanacha done. So, we really have another four aspects, another four Halachis in the Mishnah. In the Seifa, we have the Halacha regarding the one who performed the Akira. That is, Pater, Butter, Asam, and Rabbanon. But we have another additional Four cases involving the individual who did the Hanacha in those cases. So when two people contributed to a Malacha, one did the Akira, the other one the Hanacha, the one that did the Hanacha is also being Oivar and the Sidra Bonon. So in the four cases that the Mishnah cited in the Sefer, in addition to the four Akiras, there was an, there were also four Hanachas. So that gives us another four Halachas of Patar Valasar. So we have a total of twelve. We have four cases in the ratio involving full-fledged Malachas the Raisa. We have an additional eight cases in the Sefer, eight halachis, involving half malachis. Again, you only come up with a total of eight halachis in the Mishnah. Tatis we actually have twelve. Says the Gemara, if that's the case, if you're going to count every aspect of every malacha, you could actually come up with sixteen. Why is that? Because in the ratio, where the individual did the entire malacha. Suppose the Ani picked up an item from Rosh Hashanah and brought it into Rosh Hashanah and deposited it into the hand of the Baal Bayis. The mission tells us that the Ani is Chayev, it's a malacha de Raisa, but the Baal Bayis is Pata. He didn't contribute to the, to the actual Masa malacha. He's like a, a passive bystander. He played a passive role and therefore it is Pata. So we have four such halachas in the Raisha. Every time there was a malacha de Raisa done, there's another individual who played a passive role. The mission tells us that person is Potter. So why don't you add those four aspects as well? 
which will end up with a total of 16. Your 12 plus another 4 of uh, the ones that are potter in the ratio. Vili Tamech says the Gemara, according to your way of thinking, Shitzri you having, you'll actually end up with 16. So why do you only question 12? You should challenge and say, well, we actually have 16. So why does the Mishnah state in the opening of the, of the Masechta that we only have a total of 8? Shtayim Shem Arba for the Oni, Shtayim Shem Arba for the Usher, for a total of 8, we actually have not only 12, we have 16. Amalei. So if Masna responded, I'll explain. Holy Kash, that's not difficult. I never meant to ask regarding 16. Why? Because those cases in the ratio where one person performs the entire malacha and the other person is potter because he's not contributing to the malacha. In that case, he's potter, but not just potter, it is potter or motor. It's permitted for him to do so because he's not contributing at all to the, to the masa malacha. Therefore, certainly, that doesn't go into the list. That is not part of the listing of the Mishnah. Holy cash, that's not difficult. Bishlam, it's all good, Bava Duresha. In the first part of the Mishnah, Potter and Mutter like Tani. The Mishnah doesn't discuss cases which are Potter and also Mutter. The Mishnah is merely discussing cases which are Asr. Either it's Asr Midar Isa, or at least Midar Abanan. But cases that are permitted, that doesn't go into the listing of uh, the Mishnah. Therefore, that was never difficult to begin with. El Abba the Sefer. However, in the Sefer of the Mishnah, where we have two individuals doing half a malacha each, one doing the Akira and the other on the Hanacha, why don't you take account? Why don't you include in your list the din regarding the person that did the Hanacha as well? Why do you focus only on the one that did the Akira? And if that's the case, you'll end up with another four halachas in the Mishnah. All the Hanachas in the Sefer the four cases that involve one doing Akir, one doing Anacha, will give you an additional four halachas for a total of not just eight, but twelve. Says the Gemara Lababa, the Sefer, the Potter of Al Asr, Kasha, that is difficult. So the Gemara, before the Gemara attempts to, to answer this Kasha, the Gemara will take a, a small pause and say, one second, how could you suggest that when the Mishnah uses the Lushan the lush of Potter regarding the the passive role played by the, by the other individual, uh, uh, the, the case in the ratio where the person does the Mulacha Dei Raisa, and he took, takes an item, makes an Akira, and puts it into somebody else's hand, the other person is Potter, and you say that means Potter or Mutter? Can that be that the term Potter used in a Mishnah in Shabbos denotes Heter? It permits him to do it? it says the Gemara, Mi'ika Bikuli Shabbos, Potter or Mutter? Is that so? that the Lushan Potter doesn't merely mean that he's exempt from punishment, but actually allows him to proceed and play that role. Lich is that so? Is that a true interpretation? That can't be so. V'amar Shmuel, didn't Shmuel tell us? Kol Peturi the Shabbos, whenever we have the term Potter in Shabbos, it doesn't allow him to do it. He's Potter, Aval Aser, but it's, it's prohibited. So how can you say that Potter means Potter or Mutter? It's not so. Potter means he's Potter from Einish, from, from punishment. But a person may not proceed and do so. Bar mitla and tlas, except for these following three cases, where there are, these are exceptions, the Potter and Mutter. Indeed, it is not only Potter, but it is also allowed l'chadchila. What are these three examples? Tzedah Svi, capturing a deer. Tzedah Snachash, capturing a snake. Umaf is Mursa, um, forcing the pus out of a wound. The Gemara explains this later. So these are three exceptions where is actually permitted to proceed with these activities. However, elsewhere, when we use the term potter, certainly we mean potter over asr. So how can you suggest that in the ratio it is potter or mutter? Says the Gemara, no. Ki isr the Yes, indeed. Even the Lushan potter can denote heter. Why then does Shmuel tell us that these are three exceptions only in these three cases, Pater means Pater Mutter, but it sounds like elsewhere, Pater is certainly with an Isser. Says the Gemara, Shmuel needs to explain to us that even these three cases that involve active Masim, they're, they're, act, they're, they're, they're Maisim, they're, they're of the mice, he's doing an action, he's doing an act. Nevertheless, even though he's doing a Maisim, still in all, Shmuel tells us that these three are cases of Potter and Mutter, even though he's capturing the deer, capturing the snake, etc. Still, Shmuel needs to teach us that in these uh, 
In these cases, there's an exception. And uh, the Ptur is not just pottering him, exempting him from punishment, but it is also a heter. However, Pturi de Loikov, it my Ketuva. Certainly, a cases, cases which, which don't involve a, 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 an action, a maisa. Certainly, there are many such cases, many such examples that over there, indeed, when we use the Lushan potter, it implies not just potter from punishment, but it is actually also muta lechatchila. So, Shmuel gives us this, this klal, this general rule, that whenever we have the term potter in Shabbos, it means potter. But it is still prohibited, except for those three cases. Shmuel is discussing cases with involve a mice. He's doing an act, an action. However, in cases where a person is merely being passive, not actively doing anything, like our cases in the Mishnah, where the other fellow is doing the malacha completely, totally, the second person is merely playing a passive role. He's not contributing to the masa malacha. Certainly in that case, when the Mishnah uses Lush and Potter, for sure, certainly it can mean that it is not only potter from punishment, but also mutter. Okay, so this is a side point. If so, let's get back to the question. The question was, why does the Mishnah give us a total of eight cases in the Mishnah? What about the other half of the Melech? What about the Hanachis? We have another four halves in the safe of the Mishnah, and we come up with a total of twelve. Why don't we come up with a total of sixteen? Why don't we add the potter of the Reisha? Says the Mar, because that's potter of Muta. It doesn't go into the list of the Tzias and Shabbos which discusses Isurim. But what about the four Hanachos of the Sefer? Says the Nevertheless, Tart Yisrihavian. We came up with a list of twelve. Why do you ignore those four half Malachos in the Sefer? Says the Mar, we have a good answer. But Turi the Asur Bohledev Dechiv Chatos Kachashim. The Mishnah only discusses cases which bring to Chiv Chatas. For instance, in the Reisha, the Mishnah discussed complete Malachis, which bring a person to Chiv Chatas. In the Sefer as well, the Mishnah is discussing Akiris, half Malachis, but which half? The first half of the Malach, where there is a, a, a strong concern, there is a serious Chashash, that if you allow him to begin a malacha, to do the akir, to lift the item off the ground, perhaps, he will conclude it and complete it, and do the hanacha as well, and come, l'idei chiv chatas. Therefore, the Mishnah lists those as examples of Yitzhiya Sashabas, which can come to chiv chatas. Again, says the Gemara, pturi also by the chiv chatas kachashiv. The Mishnah is only discussing pturim, Cases which indeed are potter, they are not considered to be malachis, only half malachis. Nevertheless, they are asam and rabbanon since. It can lead to a chiv chatas if one should choose to conclude, to complete the malacha. Therefore, kachashiv, the Mishnah, chooses to list it. However, the lay also with a chiv chatas. Examples, scenarios which can never come to a chatas. For instance, a hanacha. If one should complete, conclude the malacha, that his friend began. If Reuven does the Akira and Shimon merely concludes it, that can never come to a Chatas. That can never lead to a complete Malacha. Shimon can never complete the Malacha. Therefore, in that case, that doesn't fit in this category of Peturi de Asur by Dev Chatas, and therefore, like a the Mishnah does not list it into the cases of Yitzhiyah's Hashabas. So Rashi explains that what is unique about Akira's because Akira's can come, the Chiv Chatos is the Tchilas Hamalacha, which which there is a concern. There's a room for Exera for a decree. Don't do it because you might end up completing the Malacha and coming the Chiv Chatos. So in conclusion, we have two parts in the Mishnah. We have the Reisha and the Seifa. The Reisha discusses the actual Malacha is the Reisha. Two, regarding the Ani, where he completed the Malach on his own, he did the Akira and the Hanacha, and he is Chayav Achatos. We have two cases involving the Balabayas, who did the Akira and the Hanacha, and in that case as well, he is Chayav Achatos. The other person that was merely playing a passive role, who received the item, or from whom the person took the item, he didn't contribute to the Masa Malacha. In that case, he is Potter, not just pata, but it's actually mutter. He's permitted 
to play that role. In the Seifa, we have a half malachas. We have four examples of Akiras, where, for instance, the Ani did the Akira and the Balabayas did the Hanacha. Or in the reverse, the Balabayas did the Akira and the Ani did the Hanacha. In the very last clause of the Mishnah, we have the Balabayas doing the Akira and the Ani did the Hanacha. In the last example, we have the Ani doing the Akira and the Balabayas did the Hanacha. In these cases, it is Potter, but it is Asr. So although we seem to have eight different Halachas here, we have eight half malachis. Nevertheless, the Mishnah chooses to focus on the akiras because the akiras can lead to a chiv chatos. And therefore, we only have a list of four, four akiras in the seifa. We add that to the four malachas of the Rasha for a total of eight scenarios in the Mishnah. Shtayim shem arba befnim, shtayim shem arba bachutz. Continues the Gemara. How can you say? That if two people do malacha together, they are both potter. Why don't you say that the fact that they both contribute to malacha, they should both be chayef? Says the Mosh name, term, why are they both potter when they only did a half malacha each? A malacha was completed, was performed between both their actions. They both contributed to a masa malacha. Says the we have a drasha that is mamait, that exempts this. From Einish. Says the Gemara Tanya, Rabbi Oimer, Me'am Aretz Ba'asoisa, when the people of the land will do, will do the Malacha Ba'asoisa, will do the Malacha. We dash them from here, Ha'oisa Eskula, one who does, does the entire Malacha, the complete Malacha, Veloya Oisa Esmektasa, but not one who does merely half the Malacha. In that case, there is no Einish. Explains the Gemara, Yachid, Va'asa Oisa Chayef. If an individual does the malacha on his own, he completes the malacha from beginning to end. In that case, he is liable, he is chayef. Shnayim va'asa oisa, but if two people contribute to the same malacha, p'tur and the apater, Thais explains that this is merely a, a, a double expression in the Gemara. The Gemara is merely reviewing the, 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 uh, this concept from two angles. First, the Gemara uses a lashon of ba'asa that you need to do the entire malacha. But not only part of it. If one does only part of the malacha, mixas, that is not sufficient to incur punishment. And the Gemara concludes from a different angle. What does this mean, doing part of the malacha? Meaning if two people do it together, even though at the end of the day we have a malacha produced, but nevertheless, since they both contribute to the malacha, which leaves only part of malacha for every, every single, for every person, in that case, since it was only a partial malacha performed by each individual, they are indeed potter from Einish. Continues the Gemara, Itzmer Nami, Omar Avchir Bar Gamdo, Nizir Kompi Chabura, it was thrown out expressed by the group, and they said as follows, Vamru, Ba'asoisa, we learn from the Pasuk, Ba'asoisa, you meant to do the entire malacha in order to incur punishment. Yachich Asachayev, if an individual did the malacha all on his own, completed from beginning to end, then he is chayev. However, if two people contributed to Malacha, they both did a Malacha together, Paturan the Apater, since they have not done a complete Malacha, each one on his own. Now, Taisi is Akasha. How could the Gemara say that in the Rasha? When Ruvain did the entire Malacha, he did the Malacha of Yitzah, he picked up an item from Shisarabim, and he carried it into Shisayachat, and he deposited it into the hand of the Balabais. The Mishnah tells us that the Balabais is Potter, and the Gemara stresses here not just Potter from punishment, but it's actually Mutter, it's permitted even in Chatchil. Says Taisus, okay, he didn't do the Balabais who received the item, perhaps didn't do anything regarding Malacha Shabbos, he didn't contribute to the Malacha of Yitzah, but what about the Iser of Lifnei Iver Leisite Mishal? One is not allowed to put a stumbling block in front of a blind person, not just a a physical stumbling block, even a, a spiritual stumbling block. One may not be a catalyst for another Jew's Avera. Therefore, how is the Balabais allowed to receive the item from the Ani? By doing so, he is being goyrim. He is causing the Ani to do the Malacha. He is allowing the Ani to complete his Malacha. That is Lifnei Iver Leisite Mishal. Taisa says, apparently we're speaking about that the the Alabais is accepting an item from a Nachri, from a non-Jew. So the Nachri is actually the one that's bringing him the item, and the item belongs to the non-Jew. 
So in that case, there's no, there's no problem. Tosis Yishanam says, and Echanami is true. There's an Isra of Naiver. However, the Mishnah here is discussing Hilchos Shabbos. You're right, there's a, a side problem of Naiver, but that's unrelated to Hilchos Shabbos. Regarding Hilchos Shabbos, the Balbayis did not contribute to the Maisa, and he wasn't over on Hilchos Shabbos. But certainly, by being the catalyst, by, by making himself available for the other person, for the other person's Malacha, by receiving the item, he is a catalyst for the Isser, and certainly he is over on the Pnei Iver, Lysita Yemichshel. Continues the Gemara, Boi Minei Rav Mi Rebbe. Rav asked Rebbe the following question. Hitina Yechavera Oichel Mamashkin Vaitzian Lechutz. Ma, what would be the Allah in the following case? We know if one does the Akira, he lifts the item with his hands, certainly that's called an Akira. What about if his friend loaded him up with food and drink, Rashi says, this is just a, a common occurrence because food and drink is something which is needed for Shabbos. And it is, it is common that people involve themselves and, and lug around food and drink for Shabbos. So, this is an example where a person took Eichel Mashkim and he loaded up his friend, he put it on his friend. So his friend didn't actually pick up the item from the ground, it was merely placed on him by the other individual. So Ruvain was matin chavero oichel mashkim. He put oichel mashkim on his friend. Voitzian lechutz and Shimon went ahead and lifted his feet and carried it outside. Is that considered to be an akira since he lifted his legs off the ground and he took them outside? Mao, what is that loch? Akira as gufay, ka akira as chevetz mi mekoyimay dami umechayer. Shall we say that although he didn't physically, practically pick up the items from the ground with his hands? But since he lifted his feet off the ground by doing so, he carried the items that he was, that he was lugging around on his, on his body. He did the Akira in that manner, and he carried it outside. Does this have a legal status? Does have a din of Akira? Akira as gufim, kakira as chayfiz, dummy. By lifting his body off the ground, does that have the halacha? As though he lifted the items off the ground as well? Um and he's liable. I do Malloy, or perhaps no, since he didn't actually pick up the items off the ground, it was already placed on him by his friend. He merely picked up his legs off the ground. He was Oikir Gufoy, never actually made direct contact with the Oikhla Mashkim. He never actually picked them up with his hands. And not considered to be an Akira, and therefore he's not Chayiv. I do Malloy, perhaps he's not Chayiv. Says the Gemara, Amar Leh, so Rabbi responded, yes, certainly Chayev. He is Chayev, is considered to be a full-fledged Mas Yakira, and uh, it is as though he lifted the items off the ground and took them outside and deposited them. That is considered to be a Moloch And Rabbi continued to explain, Ve'enoi doi meliyadoi. There's absolutely no room for comparison between uh, this halacha and the halacha found in our Mishnah, the halacha of Yodoi. Meaning, perhaps one can ask a contradiction, a kasha, on my halacha, from the halacha found in our Mishnah, where we have the Ani, who is in Rosh Hashanah, and extends his hand, his Yodah, into Rosh Hashanah, towards the Balabais. The Balabais then takes an object, places it on this outstretched hand. The Mishnah tells us, not only is the Balabais potter, because he never, he never actually carried something to Rosh Hashanah, but even the Ani is potter. Now, you can ask a kasha on me, because if I tell you that, Akiras gufa kerkeas chefetz, so if uh, even his friend loads him up with something, so it's sitting on him, that is regarded as Hanoch as Munach. Now when he goes ahead and lifts himself off the Yerush and carries uh, that load into Yerush I told you it's considered to be a Akira, because he, although he never actually picked the item off the ground, but the fact that it was sitting on him is regarded as Munach as having been fully in a resting uh, position. And then when he goes and and walks away, lifts his body off the ground, he's actually lifting the object with it. He does the Akira, and then when he deposits into Sarab, we have an Akira and Anoch. Here as well, why can't we say that the fact that the Balbais places this object in the Oni's hand is considered to be Munach at rest? Now when the Oni picks that up and carries it out into Sarab, he did an Akira and Anoch. Says Rabbi, no, you can't compare the two things. You can't compare to that case. Why? My time and why? Gufo Inayich. In our case, in my case, his body is resting on the ground. It's an unfirm ground, and when someone places something on top of him, 
He's actually placing that object on the ground. It's at rest. It's fully munach because it's placed on a person who is standing on the ground. And therefore, when this person then goes and walks out with that chayfet to the he is doing an akira, akira's gufay. When he lifts his body off the ground with the item on top of it, it's as though he's lifting the item itself. He's doing an akira. And then when he rests in Inshus Rabbim, he is doing the Hanukha. As opposed to the case of the Yadi Shalani, which was suspended mid-air. It wasn't, it wasn't sitting on firm ground. It was hanging mid-air. Therefore, the item placed on that by the Balabal Ba'is is not considered to be Munach at rest. And therefore, when the Ani takes that out Inshus Rabbim, he didn't do an akira because an akira is only when the item was at rest and he lifted it off its resting place. Here, when it was sitting on its hand mid-air, it wasn't Munach at all. And therefore, certainly in that case, when he carries it out in Shusarabim and places it in Shusarabim, he don't only have a he didn't do an akira, and therefore he's put. Continues the Gemara. Omalei Rav Chia Rav. Rav Chia made the following comment to Rav. Rav, who just asked Rebbe the, the question regarding the person who was loaded with the Echel Mashkim, and he walked outside, does it have a din of akira or not? So Rav Chia challenged Rav. He says, Bar Pachsi, the son of noble, noble people, this was a complimentary term. Didn't I once tell you? When Rebbe is involved in a specific Masechta, in this Masechta, don't ask him a question regarding a halacha in a different Masechta, in a different topic. Perhaps he won't know the answer because he's immersed in one topic and he won't, be, he won't have the clarity that is necessary to properly respond to your question. And this can embarrass him. Deal of the Rebbe Gavarabu, if not for the fact that Rebbe was a great Torah scholar, and indeed he has the ability to answer even on topics that are, that are off topic, that are not topics that he's involved in at the current moment. If not for that fact, Kasafte, you could have brought him shame. The Mishan Lach Shinui Lach Shinuyu. When you asked him the question, and uh, not for the fact that he was so great, and he has such clarity in Torah, perhaps he would have answered you something which was inappropriate, which wasn't true, and uh, this kind of could have brought him shame. So, one should not do so. In the future, don't do that. Only focus on the topic of the present. Don't ask him questions that are unrelated to the topic at hand. Says the Gemara, Hashta Mias Shapi Mishanalach. Continue of Chia. Yes, indeed, since he is so great, he indeed answered you the, the proper answer. The response that he told you that when the Echel Mashkim was loaded on to him and he lifted it off the ground by merely lifting his body, Akiras Gufoy, Kakiras Chayfet Dami, Akiras Gufoy, lifting the, the body off the ground is akin, is equivalent to having lifted the items off the ground. That is a proper response. That indeed is the true halacha. Now bring you a raya. Hashta mias shapi mishanlach. It seems now, it's pretty obvious, that the answer that he told you is the correct one. I'll bring you a proof. The sign is one in the price. Hayoton If one was loaded with food and drink, from Arab Shabbos, so somebody loaded him up with food and drink when it was still Erev Shabbos. So this Akira doesn't have the legal status of Akira. It took place on Erev Shabbos. So now he's loaded up and comes Shabbos. What was the case here? And uh, this fellow who was loaded the Echel Mashkim went ahead and uh, lifted his legs and went outside into Shusha Rabbim. After Shabbos arrived, after dark, says the Bray. Sachayv is Why? Obviously, the Akira's Gufay, lifting his body off the ground, lifting his legs off the ground, that is Ka'akira's Chayfetz Dami. That accomplishes a Masi Akira, the lifting up of the Chayfetz from the ground, and therefore, it is considered to be a Malacha. Indeed, Rebbe's answer, Rebbe's response, was the correct one. Because lifting in this manner is very different than the case in the Mishnah, where the hand was suspended, as we explained earlier, since it's suspended mid-air, it doesn't have the status of Munach al karka, and if one places an item into an outstretched hand, which is uh, being extended from one to the other, in that case, 
since the hand is not resting on the ground, placing an item into that hand does not constitute hanoch. However, in this case, where the person is standing firm on the ground, by lifting his body off the ground, he is performing a mas akira on the oichel mashkim that are lying on him as well. So indeed, this is a true halacha, and is considered to be a akira and hanocha and a full-fledged malachas hoitza. Continues the Gemara. We had cases in the Mishnah describing a person standing in one rishus, extending his hand into a different rishus, and passing over items, or the person standing in the other rishus took the item from his hand, from his outstretched hand, says Abayi. Let's make an interesting observation. Omar Abayi, pshitali, it's pretty obvious to me, it is self-evident. Yodesh Lodam, the hand of a person. When one person is standing in a specific rishus, for example, he's standing in rishus Rabbim, and he extends his hand into rishus HaYachet. What is the status of his hand? Does his hand also maintain the status of Rishus HaRavim? Does it have the same halacha as his body? Or in the case of Rishus HaYachon, a person standing in Rishus HaYachon and extends his hand into the Rishus HaRavim. Does his hand have the same status as his guf? Does it, is it considered to be a Rishus HaYachon? And if one places an item into that hand, is it, as though, is it considered as though he has placed an item into Rishus HaYachon? Because the hand has the same din as the guf. Says Abaye, no, it's pretty obvious that we don't connect the outstretched hand to the guf. When the guf is in one rishus and the hand extends into a different rishus, the hand doesn't have the same status as the guf. Omar Abaye, pshitali, this is Pashat, Yodei Shal Adam, Eina Loi Kushus Arabim, and Veloi Kushus Yachat. Kushus Arabim Loi Damya, the hand does not have the din of Shus Arabim, meaning, if one is standing in Shusarabim and he extends his hand into the Shusayachat, this hand doesn't have the status of a Shusarabim. How do we know that? Miyad the Ani. Simple. From the case of the Ani who was standing outside, he extended his hand inside. And uh, the Mishnah tells us that if the Balabais took from that hand and uh, took the item and placed it into the Shusayachat, he didn't do a Malach. He didn't do a full fledged Malach. He merely did a Nacha. It's not considered to be like he was oiker from a shusayach, from a shusarab, and he placed it and landed into a shusayachet. Why? Evidently, taking an item from the extended hand of the ani who was standing in shusarab, that hand does not have the status of a shusarab. So if the balbayis simply takes an item from that hand, it is not considered as if he was oiker from the shusarab. The hand does not have the din of a shusarab. We find a similar concept. The same thing will be in the reverse. If one is standing in the Shusayachet and he extends his hand out to Shusarabim, his hand doesn't have the status of Shusayachet. How do we know that? Miyadid the Balabayis. From the case of the Balabayis who was standing in Shusayachet, he extends his hand to Shusarabim. And uh, the mission tells us that when the only takes the item out of this outstretched hand, even though it is coming from the hand of a person who is standing in Shusayachet, nevertheless, the mission does not consider this to be a full fledged malacha. The Ani, removing the item from the outstretched hand, is not considered as though he did it Akira from Rosh Hashayachet, even though the owner of the hand is standing in Rosh Hashayachet. Nevertheless, since his hand is in a different domain, is in Rosh Hashayachet, therefore the hand does not have the din of Rosh Hashayachet. So that's obvious. We see that very clear from the Mishnah, that if one is standing in one Rosh extends his hand into a different Rosh the hand does not assume the same status as the person's goof. Abai, Abai, Abai asked the following question. So it's not like Rosh Hashanah, it's not like Rosh Hashanah. Perhaps it can have another status. Do we say that perhaps the person's outstretched hand has a new din, has a din of a Carmelis? What is a Carmelis? Up until now we had two Rosh Hashanahs. We discussed two types of domains, Rosh Hashanah, the place which is designated for the individual an enclosed area. We had a case of Rosh Hashanah, a public domain, a street, a marketplace, which is meant for Hilach Rabbim, where the, where the multitudes, where the public uses for their walking. We have another type of domain, which is a Dirabbanon, a Rosh Hashanah called a Carmelis. It is neither a Rosh Hashanah nor a Rosh Hashanah. It is something in between. It is a limbo. For example, Rashi says, like a forest, which is not a Rosh Hashanah, it's not designated for, for individual use. It is still, it is, it, the public has access to it. But nevertheless, as Rashi explains, although it's not meant for Shimush Yachid, it's not meant for Tashmish 
of Rosh Hashayach, of the individual, nevertheless, is also not meant for Hiluch Tamid Laravim. The public doesn't walk through that area. So it's in between, has an in between status. Rashi says the Lashon Carmelis is Lashon Ya'ari Vekarmelay, a forest. Tesis brings down that the Lashon Carmelis is Carmelay. It's the Lashon of a grain which is caramel, which is neither too moist nor too dry. It's somewhere in between. It's a limbo state. The Ramam has another explanation for Carmelis. It's Lashon of Almana, a widow. Since she is, just as a widow is... Is, is missing her husband, she's devoid of, of a Baal. So to this Rishus of Karmelis, is Almana, in Aramaic, Karmelis is, uh, Almana is, is Armal, is Armalta. That's the Lashon Almana. So Karmelis is Karmalta, it's like an Almana. It's just in a state of limbo. It's an undefined Rishus. This is a Rishus to Rabbanon. Now the Rabbanon considered a Karmelis to have both halachis. They gave it all the chumras, the stringencies of both Rosh Hashayach and Rosh Hashayach. Since it contains both elements, it has the element of Rosh Hashayach because it's not really made for public walking. It has an element of Rosh Hashayach since it's not really designated for the individual. It's not an enclosed area. Since it has both elements. So on an account of the fact that it has the element of Rosh Hashayach, they consider it to be Rosh Hashayach and when we not carry from a karmless to Rosh To avoid confusion, a person might say, well, you see, you can carry from Rosh Hashayach. And due to the fact that it has the element of Rosh Hashayach as well, therefore they prohibited, prohibited one to carry from the karmless to Rosh Hashayach, lest one make a mistake and say, well, you see, you can carry from Rosh Hashayach to Rosh Hashayach. So they gave it all the stringencies of both Rosh Hashayach and Rosh Hashayach. It says Abayi, perhaps if one, if one extends his hand into, into another rishus, if one, if one extends his hand from one rishus to the other, perhaps we will say that since you extend your hand out to, for instance, the rishus haravim, and uh, you weren't careful, you did the, the tchilas malacha, you did the akira, you were oikir an item, and you extended it out to, for instance, the rishus haravim. So even though you didn't do a hanacha, perhaps. The Chachamim applied a knas to this person. They punished him. A penalty they applied to him. And they considered his hand to be a Carmelis. It's like a, a Rishus Carmelis. has his own uh, status. And therefore, he must keep his hand outstretched with the item. He can't go ahead and return it and bring it back to the Rishus of his goof. Because one may not carry from a Carmelis to another Rishus. He can't carry from a Carmelis to Rishus Ayachet. Can carry from a conversation to Rabbim. So what does he have to do? He has to stand there a whole Shabbos until, until Matzah Shabbos, on account of the knas that the Chum applied to this person, since he took the risk and he began with a Tchilas Iser, he extended his hand outside into the other Rishus. He did the Akira, he did half of Malacha, or if he did it, if he did it on Arab Shabbos, he should have quickly brought it back. He should have retrieved the item before Shabbos. He shouldn't have remained in that position when Shabbos came along. So if Abayi speculates, perhaps there is a, a room for a knas to Rabbana, for a penalty, an oinish, that the Chamim prohibited him from returning the item to the rishus of his guf. He can't bring it back to his guf. He must stand in that position, in that outstretched position, that extended position. We, um, we applied the term, the status of Carmelis to this person's hand, and he must stand there in limbo until the end of Shabbos. Again, says the Gemara, Baya Baya. Yadai shal Adam, Mao shati asa karmelis. Perhaps the hand turns into a shus karmelis, and he can't go ahead and retrieve the item. He must stand there in that position until the end of Shabbos. Mikan sura ban la dur le gabe yoloi. Did the chachamim apply a knas? and didn't allow him to re- return the item, or not. Says the Gemara, Toshma, Hoysa Yadam Malay appears. Let's bring a raya to this child. The Brasa tells us if one's hand contained fruit, and he extends it outward to Yishus HaRabim, Tani Chada Asa, one Brasa which says, Asa Lachzira, he may not retrieve it, he can't return it. Vitani Yidach, Muta Lachzira, another Brasa which says, yes, he can bring it back. Apparently, 
the machlokes between the braces are revolving around this question. Mar savar ki is damya. One shita says that his hand has a din of a karmelis, and therefore he can't retrieve it. Or mar savar lav ki is damya. The other braces which says he can return it holds no. The Chacham did not apply the status of a karmelis to one's hand. So we see that this question is actually based on a machlokes tanoim. Says my Lord, the kuliyam everybody else ki karmelis damya. That certainly the hand has the status of a karmelis, and ordinarily, if one should extend his hand that contains an object to the other ishus, he must remain standing in that position, he can't bring it back. For like Kashi, it's not difficult. How are we going to resolve these two braises? Kan lamata masara, kan lamala masara. Braise which says that he cannot retrieve the item, is speaking about that he extended his hand into the ishus rabim. Lamata masara. Underneath tent facham, meaning it's within tent facham to the surface of the rishus rabim. In that case, the rishus rabim rishus domain extends up until where his hand is, since the rishus rabim extends upward tent facham, and uh, therefore he cannot retrieve the item since he did an iser when he extended his hand into the rishus rabim. However, the case, the brisa which says that he may be machzer his hand, he may retrieve it. Is speaking about when he extended his hand into the Shusrabim, Lamalam Asfar Tvachim, hide into Tvachim off the ground. In that case, it does not constitute the Shusrabim. That is considered to be a Mokham Ptur. This is the fourth domain. We had Rishusayacha, Shusrabim, Karmelis. Now we have a fourth domain called Mokham Ptur, a place which is neither Rishusayacha, Shusrabim, or Karmelis. It's a Mokham Ptur, it doesn't involve any Yisurim. It's a place that has no identity. It is not connected to the nor is it Rishusarabim. It is up in the air. It is not a place of, of Rishus. And therefore, in that case, there's no problem retrieving your hand because when you extended it up, Lamalam Yutfachim, you didn't extend it into any Rishusarabim. So there's no Issa performed, not even a partial Issa. And therefore, certainly, there's no room for a Knas. So, in conclusion, everybody perhaps hold that when one did an Issa, Chachamim obliged him to stand in that position. They gave his hand the status of a Karmelis. And he cannot transfer the item back into the Rishus that he's standing. He can't bring it back. However, the Bryce, which tells us he can do it, is speaking about when he never did an Issa to begin with. He merely extended his hand into a Mokham Ptur. Into a, a, a domain of Ptur. Lamala Masar Tfacham. Therefore, he didn't even do an Ayod of Issa and he can re- return and retrieve the item. The Boy Sema, perhaps we have another Teretz. Idim Idil Mata Masara. Both Bryce are speaking about that he extended his hand less than 10 Tfacham to the surface of Shisravim. So indeed, he did an answer. Falaf ki is Damyab. Everybody holds that the Ham never applied the status, the legal status of Karmelis to one's outstretched hand. But like Kashya, there's, there's no difficulty between the Bryces. How are we going to explain the two Bryces? Kan mi Baidyoim, Kan mi Even though the Chachamim never applied this concept of Karmelis to one's hand. No. It's merely a knas. The Chacham said as follows. Your hand doesn't have a din of a Karmelis. Nevertheless, since you did an Isser, by extending your hand into the other Rishus, in that case, you did a Tchilas Isser, you did a partial Isser, a partial Malacha, and therefore the Chacham applied a penalty. You must stand there, you must remain standing in that position until the end of Shabbos. So therefore, if he stretched out his hand, he extended his hand when it was already Shabbos, Mishcha Sheikha, then he indeed did a Tchilas Isser, and the Chacham applied the penalty of the Knas, he must remain standing there. The Bryce which says that he can retrieve the item is speaking of Mbayd Yoim. When he stretched out his hand, he extended his hand with the item when it was still day, it was still Erev Shabbos. In that case, the Chacham did not apply any Knas because he didn't actually do an active Isser. At that point, it was still Erev Shabbos. So no is it performed when he extended his hand. There's a hum didn't apply any knas, and certainly he can retrieve the item back even on Shabbos. Explains the Gemara. If he extended his hand during the day, look at Rabbanan. Rabban did not apply a knas. Mishcha Sheikha. However, if he did it once, Shabbos arrived. It was very dark. Consul Rabbanan. The Rabbanan did apply their is. So the Gemara here is working with the premise that there is no concept of karmelis. Rashi explains. Because if there would be the concept of karmelis applied to one's outstretched hand, there would be no room to differentiate between Baidyoy, Meshach even if he extended his hand when it was still Erev Shabbos. 
but his hand has the din of a Carmelis. His outstretched hand, in a different Rishus, has the din of a Carmelis. So even if he did it, it would still be Asr, because his hand is a Carmelis. The Gemara is working out with the premise, no, that his hand doesn't have a din of a Carmelis. It's merely a penalty that Rabban applied when a person does an Isser. Therefore, it only applies when he extended his hand when it was Shabbos. In that case, Rabbanon prohibited him from retrieving his item, retrieving his hand. So that's more Adarab, just the opposite. You're working with the angle that when a person did the Isser, he extended his hand, he did a Tchilas Isser, he did the Akira, when it was already Shabbos. In that case, Rabbanon answered him from retrieving the item. If he did it, not a problem. And that is the Reconciliation, the resolving of the stira between the two prices. Says the other Rab, just the opposite. If chamestavra, it is logical to say in the reverse. Me be'oidyoim. In the case we extended his hand when it was still erev Shabbos. In that case, since there was no akiras iser, it was still erev Shabbos. So even if you, if you oblige him, you compel him to stay standing in that position, and perhaps he will tire and. Uh, Toss away the item. The Isha delay, even if he throws it away into the Rosh Hashanah, well, he also did Chiv Chatas. He will not come to a Chiv Chatas. Why? Because the Akira, the Tchilas Malacha, took place in Baidyayim. So there's no chance, there's no possibility of this person ever arriving at a Isra Chatas. In that case, the Kinsur Abonon, there's no room for concern. Yes, in that case, the Chacham should apply the Knas and not allow him to retrieve the item. What's the worst that could happen? That will toss away the item. He'll make a Hanukkah. So it's a Hanukkah with Adon Akira because the Akira took place on Erev Shabbos. There's no possibility, there's no potential for coming to a Chiyav Chatos, a Malacha de Reise. So in that case, since he did something wrong by leaving his hand extended when Shabbos came, the Rabbana should apply their class. However, Meshach HaSheikh, in the case where he extended his hand when it was very dark, in that case, yes, there's a serious concern there's a serious problem with answering him, prohibiting him from retrieving the item. Why? Because if he gets tired, what might he do? He might toss away the item. He might throw the item into the Shusarabim. In that case, he will come to do a Malacha Dairaisa because the Akira took place at night and the Anacha took place on Shabbos as well. The Ishadile, if he throws it away, also by the Chatas. He can come to a Chatas. Loyal can In that case, it's logical to say that Rabbanu should not apply the Xera. So the reasoning that you presented should really work in the reverse. You suggested that when the person extended his hand, Mi Bo'idyoim, the Chacham did not apply the Xera. If he did it, Meshech HaShech, the Rabbanu did apply the Xera. Perhaps I would say just the opposite. When he extended his hand, hand Bo'idyoim, then the Chacham should oblige him to stay standing because there's no concern that he may come with Yechiv Chatz if he gets tired. In the case where he did it, Meshech HaSheikh, he did that Kira, when it was very Shabbos. In that case, we must be careful. We can't obligate him to stay standing because he can come to do a Chatas if he tosses the item into the other Rishus and completes his Malacha. Says the apparently, you're not concerned about this type of concern. From the fact that the Gemara did not take this approach, apparently we're not concerned that he may come with the Chatas, Rabbanon, Prohibited from retrieving the item, even in a place, in a mock, in a circumstance where there is a genuine concern that a person could come with the Chatas. So, if so, we have a resolution to another Shaila mentioned the Gemara. From the fact that we're not concerned, we not, did not answer, we did not take this approach. With Loika Mashina and Hoch, we did not give this answer to the steer of the Brises. Apparently, we have a, we have a clarity regarding another Shaila. Tiv Shaydar Bebi, Barabaye. We have a, a, a Pshitas. We have a resolution for a Shaila. That Rav Bibi Rabbi asked, the boy Rav Bibi Rabbi, hit big pas batanur. If a person sticks the, the dough onto the walls of the oven, and we know that mid a person is not meant to peel the, the bread off the wall of the oven, even though it's not really a malacha, but one may not do so on Shabbos. Some Rafashim explain it's uvdin the it has a, a weekday taste to it, it's a, it's a weekday type of activity. So the Chacham did not allow one to peel off the, the bread from the wall of the oven. What if a person puts the, the bread in the oven on Shabbos? Can he go ahead and quickly peel off the bread, peel off the dough before it bakes? 
hidbik bas betanu. If he sticks the the pas, the dough, into the onto the wall of the tanu, he tear loy the redoisa. Did the chacham allow him to peel it off? Koydem shiyove di echiv chatas before the bread bakes, and he will incur echiv chatas. So did the chacham allow? Did they make a leeway? Did they make an exemption regarding their iser of redia of peeling the bread off the wall of the tanur? Did they allow this person to do it so that he that he saves himself, that he that he prevents from incurring echiv chatas? Or did they not? Allow it. Did they stay steadfast with their, remain steadfast with their shvus, with their isa shvus? Did not allow a person to remove the bread, to be roides apas, to be over on this irabonon, even in the face of incurring a malacha, of resulting in a malacha deraisa of afia. So this was the question that our baby by Bai asked. We know there's a isa shvus to be roides apas to removing, to peeling off the bread off the wall of the oven. However, perhaps this is different. When a person has stuck the bread in on Shabbos, and the dough is about to bake, and will bring him a chiv chatas, and he realizes he becomes aware, one second it's Shabbos, he wants to quickly remove the dough. Did the Chama allow him to do that? Did they give leeway with their Isur de Rabbanan to allow a person, to prevent a person, to save a person from coming to a malacha to a chiv chatas? He tear, did they allow it? Or did they not allow it? Tifsha delay tear, apparently. From the prior discussion in the Gemara, where apparently the Gemara was not concerned with a person eventually coming to Achiv Chatas. We said, well, even when he, was, when he extended his hand at night, he did the Akira on Shabbos. We, we oblige him, we amachayev him, to stay in that position. He cannot retrieve the item, even though there's a genuine concern that he might get tired and throw away the item and make the hanacha. Nevertheless, the Chacham applied the Isra the Rabbanon, even in that case, even when it carries a potential to result in a Malacha Daraisa. So we see from here that the Chachamim were steadfast regarding their Isra the Rabbanon, even in the face of a potential Malacha. Says so the Kash, it's not difficult, Tivshit. Indeed, we have a resolution, we have a clarity from the Gemara. Regarding that case as well, yes, the Chacham insisted on fulfilling their Isra Rabban even in the face of a potential Malacha. Perhaps if, it was, if you can say, we'll say differently, we don't have a resolution, we can't draw a parallel from our case to the case of the bread and the oven. Why? Because in our case, there is no real genuine concern that he might toss away the item and, uh, and conclude with a Isra with a Malacha de Rais. There's no concern. It's different than the bread in the oven. In that case, if he leaves it in the oven, it certainly will bake and he will incur a malacha of afia, a malacha de rice. In our case, when the Chacham say that a person extends his hand with an item, he must remain standing there. There's no concern that he'll, that he'll throw it away. We assume that he'll remain standing in that position until the end of Shabbos. And therefore, when he did it b'shoigek, when he did it inadvertently, the Chachamim did not apply any Gzeira. When he did it b'mezid, then the Chacham did apply the Gzeira. Let's see inside. V'loi kash, that's not difficult. The two braises will be resolved as follows. Kan b'shoigeg, kan b'mezid. B'shoigeg, like on Surah Abbanon. When a person did it b'shoigeg, the Rabbanon did not apply any knas. B'mezid, kan Surah Abbanon. When a person did it b'mezid, he extended his hand knowingly, intentionally. He knew it was else Asr, he knew he was doing half a malacha. He knew he was doing it to Rabbanon. In that case, the Rabbanon applied their knas and obligated him to remain standing. So we're going to resolve the Bryce in this manner. The Bryce which says that he may not retrieve his item is speaking about that he extended his hand to Mezid. So regardless of whether, whether it took place in Bayudyayim or Meshach HaSheikha, he cannot retrieve the item. The Bryce which allows him to return his hand Speaking about that, he did a b'shoig inadvertently. So regardless of whether, whether it took place, b'yoyim, m'shach ha-sheicha, it is mutter. Says the word, b'yis eima, perhaps we have another resolution to the two b'yises, e divi, the b'shoig, in both cases speaking about that, he did a b'shoig, v'hocha, b'konsu shoig, to amazing k'miflik. M'chalik says, whether we apply the knas, even to a shoig, or to amazing, I'm concerned that it might lead to amazing, it might cause confusion, it might bring someone to do the same thing with amazing. Marsa, a consul shaygat to maize it, one bright holds, yes, even a shaygig 
the Chacham applied their knas, or to Mezid, are concerned that might lead to a Mezid. Omar Sabbath, the other Bible says, no, like Hansa Shagi, to Mezid, we do not, not apply a knas to a Shagi. Vibay Seyma, if you want, I'll tell you another terrace. Lo'ilam lo'i kansu. Everybody agrees that when it's a shaygig, there is no reason, there's no place to make a knas shaygig or two mazit. For like kasha, it's not difficult. We can explain the brises as follows. Both are speaking about it was a shaygig. Kan lo'i sechatsu, the brises which allows, is speaking about allowing to retrieve it back to his courtyard, back to his location. That's allowed. Kan lechatsu acheres, the other brises which says aser, is speaking about if he wants to toss the item into a different courtyard, even though he's not putting it into Shisarab, he's tossing it to a different Shisayachet. That also is not allowed, as the Gemara will explain the reason. Kedeboi minei rubber of Nachman. Rabbi asked the following question of Nachman. And his hands were full of fruit. And he extended it into a different Rishus. May he retreat back to his Chatzar. Oh, my Lord, Nachman says, Yeah, Mutter. What about L'chotza Acheres, he asked him. Can he toss him into a different courtyard? Ma'u. Amale, no. Asa, that he can't do. Umayishna. So he said, what is the difference? So he answered him in a joking manner. L'chitech l'akula de milcha. When you go ahead and you measure a kur, a large amount of salt, then I'll tell you. So indeed the Gemara gives us the explanation. Hosam. Over there, when he retrieves it back to his chotzer, L'yisavidu machshavta. His intention was not fulfilled. His plan, his goal to clear his courtyard, his chatzar of this item didn't come into fruition. He needed to bring it back to the same location. However, Hochan, the case where he tosses it into a different courtyard, is Havidah Machshavta. His plan was fulfilled. He wanted to clear his chatzar of this item, and indeed he did so. Therefore, in his mind, all he's going to remember is that he was allowed to clear his chatzar of the item. He's not going to differentiate and say, well, they only allowed me to toss it into a, a different chatzar with the Shusayachid. No, next time that he wants to clear his chutz of an item, and this happens, so he's going to take the item from his extended hand and toss it straight into the Shusarabim. He's not going to differentiate between Shusarabim and chutz or Therefore, if we allow him to throw it into a different chutz, this may come to a malacha daray, so he may toss it directly into the Shusarabim. So therefore, in that case, he can go ahead and proceed. He can't toss it into a different chutz. However, to allow him to bring it back to his first chutz, in that case, since his plan, his goal, was never realized. He wanted to empty his chatzah and that didn't happen. He needed to bring it back to his chatzah so that we allow him to do it. There's no concern that this will lead to any further malachas of Issa Daraisa. So in summary, we have a b'raisa which says one cannot retrieve the item. The other b'raisa says yes, he may retrieve the item when he extended his hand into a different chatzah. The Gemara has six approaches to explain the machlekes. The first approach was the b'raisa which says Asr holds that his hand has the status of a Rishus Carmelis. And therefore he cannot transfer an item from the Carmelis into another Rishus. The other Bryce says, no, the hand does not have a din of a Carmelis, therefore he can return the item. The next approach of the Gemara was, well, it depends on the circumstance. If he extended his hand, with intent facham of Shusarabim, that has a din of the public domain of the Shusarabim, and he must remain standing in that position. The Shita which says, the Bryce which says, he can retrieve the item, speaking about, was Lama it's a Makam Tur. The next approach was, well, it depends when he extended his hand, whether it's still day by day or he did it on Shabbos. The next approach was, it depends if it's Shagig or Mezid. The next approach was, well, it depends even by Shagig, whether we say Kansu Shagig or to Mezid. And finally, it depends whether he's retrieving the item back to his original Chatzar or he's taking it and tossing it into a different Chatzar. In that case, his goal, his plan, his purpose was achieved. And there's a concern the next time he'll toss it directly into the Shusarama and do a Melacha And therefore, that was not allowed.